Good evening to all. Hope you're all doing well. My colleagues and I have a new toy to sell. The point of our toy, which we call City Lights, is to entertain kids in the day and at night. We're sure that all ages will think that it's great, but enjoy the most by kids four to eight. <laughs> the cost of a kid is not much on its own, comparing in price to block toys you may own. To be more precise, let's say 40 today, based on material costs and what people would pay, but I'm only here to convey market specs. For design, let me introduce our architects. <laughs> Block construction, let it be understood, they're made out of love, but mostly plywood. <laughs> Yellow, green, purple, pink, blue, and white are just some of the colors that provide the light. You can stack them all up, you can take them all down, and the light remains on when you move them around. I know it seems crazy, but if you give them a try, the colors will change before your very eye. Well, all kids are different, so we decided our team to make all of our blocks very own theme. The first that we made, well, it's quite standard indeed, and allowed kids to create a city as scene. Now, some kids may dream of castles and queens, so for them, we decided on a medieval theme. <laughs> Blast off to the future, far from home, or build a zoo where the animals roam. From modern to future, medieval to zoo, there's just so many great things that you could do. Uh, now, with storage in mind, we made each of our base just large enough for the blocks to be placed. Inside and hidden, concealed, stored away, until next time, just ready to play. Now how each of these blocks work, I've yet to make clear, so I'll hand it off now to our team engineer. All right, this part's a bit technical, some may think it's dry, but I'm going to explain the electronics inside. The rectifier bridge and resistors are key, because they both get soldered to two LEDs. The LEDs then get wired to a board. The wires are exposed, but equally spaced. Equally spaced? I just mean they align with metal rails placed on the baseboard design. The rails alternate between 5 volts and ground, and the blocks light up when the wires touch down. But how is it that these blocks light up for hours? Well, we have this special block that's battery powered. But I don't understand. That block looks the same. Well, it's a little bit different in size, so let me explain. A 9 volt cell is now quite satisfactory, so in our future product we'll use a lithium battery. Our uh, one key component is needed for sure, it's an LM340 voltage regulator. <laughs> <laughs> when the lights are all gone, you'll be perfectly able to recharge a block with the USB cable. <laughs> There's also... But oh, wait, there are more facts! I think we've said enough, let's just leave it at that. I think that we've shown just how awesome it is. I know I would have loved it when I was a kid. If there's any more questions, just let us know. We'll also be at the booth at the end of the show. Um, first I'm wondering, would it be possible to do like different shapes besides blocks? And like maybe like for up on top, I mean besides just rectangle ones? And also, I'm gonna, for an idea, maybe like uh, blank, like blank paper ones with like, maybe just like the punch on windows and then the kids could like color their own designs on it and stuff. It's just. Yeah, it's definitely possible to make any kind of shape blocks you want. Um, we went with, you know, more of a rectangular shape for this intro, and we actually talked a lot about making kind of a customizable kit as an add-on, so you get to draw it yourself and put it onto the base. Um, how do they change colors, like the ones that are like stacked on top? Uh, yes, that's a great question. So the way these blocks change colors is that there's basically two sets of contacts, and each of those contacts, each of those sets correspond to a different LED. Um, how do they change the 
It seems like you've really thought through the packaging of the product and speaking to that process. Yeah, for packaging, what we really wanted to do was have each of the blocks be able to fit back within their own base. So you're not looking at a really large footprint on the shelf and you can pack it all together and store it in your own home here neatly. Could you demonstrate that? Not on this set. <laughs> <laughs> this is our demo set for up here. <laughs> So uh, with regards to durability of the contacts on top of the blocks, uh, so throughout all of our play testing with this style of connector, which was about three iterations, uh, we found that it wasn't so much the, uh, it, what made the contacts robust was their ability to kind of conform to, uh, to different surfaces. So with the current setup, they don't, they don't necessarily ever fail. It's just that they, um, they kind of need to be pushed together a uh, bit. But in, our, for, in future iterations, what we would look at is uh, increasing the surface area of those contacts so that we could get a, a more robust connection. Yes. Um, as uh, well, young boys are want to do, <laughs> what happens if you put your tongue on the contact? <laughs> <laughs> you should be totally fine because, well, so we have a, we have a protection circuit in place with this, so if it detects that, let's say you put your tongue on it and there's a short, it'll cut power and no harm will be done. <laughs> okay, so my nephew likes to throw things and kind of building off of what he said. If he were to like chuck it across the room, would it break? It will not break um, <clears throat> because I trip a lot and I can just tell you that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you City Lights. 